started when I was 17 mm -hmm. and then I stopped for a while and then again I started when I was 19 mm -hmm. and then I've been smoking since, since then. then. Yeah. And in the beginning it's fun, you enjoy it, it gives you a high, the body is strong as a teenager, you don't really feel the damage. Yeah. But then because as you get older, mm -hmm. it becomes more and more of a burden. Like, like the, the thing that I really blame it on is uh, in when I, I grew up in India and there was this company that started uh, introducing new cigarettes called Charms mm -hmm. and the tagline was Charms is the spirit of freedom, mm -hmm. Charms is the way you are, right? And somehow like that, you know, uh, resonated. Mm -hmm. And you know now I curse them, but right, curse Sir Walter Raleigh. He was such a stupid kid. That's a line from John Lennon in the song "I'm So Tired" from 1968, the White Album. Mm -hmm. It says it's about smoking. It says, I'm so tired. Although I'm so tired, I light I lit another cigarette and curse Sir Walter Raleigh. He was such a stupid kid. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, you cursed them now, John Lennon cursed them. Nevertheless, the cigarette companies continue to advertise, brainwash, especially youngsters, with themes just, just as the one, like the one you mentioned. Associating cigarettes with good life, good times, freedom, and all of these things which in actuality are contrary to what it brings. Because it takes away your freedom, you become dependent on cigarettes. So this little thing, your entire life, becomes dependent on this little thing. And unfortunately, that's a fact of the matter. Um, and it's, it's, it's disgusting in terms of the enjoyment. This guy walked into the tram the other day with a half-burnt cigarette. You know, if you take a piece of apple and you let it, after a week, you don't do anything with it, it just dries and it doesn't lose its integrity and beauty in a way and it's still not disgusting. You put a piece of meat out there, it becomes rotten with worms and stuff. Cigarette is like that. You light it and you let, just take half of it, um, uh, you know. Stub it out. Yeah. And that, that stuff is, is so disgusting, you know, the smell. Because mm -hmm. they use these chemicals in it, even the natural kind. It's just a disgusting thing. And the taste, you know, the cereal company talk about, oh, it tastes good. Enjoy the taste. That thing tastes awful. Anybody who tasted cigarettes for the first time, they must have choked. And then your system gets used to it after, after a while. So anyway, you look at it is a nasty thing. What does it bring? What positive does it bring? It brings about, I don't know, three seconds or five seconds of relaxation, so-called relaxation, or, or a shot of um, nicotine to your nervous system, which gives you a temporary high. <clears throat> the, the, the one thing that you know, cigarette does do is take your mind off things. Right, mm -hmm. but you could do that with hundred different ways. Mm -hmm. Right, you could take climb the stairs and mm -hmm. take your mind off what you're doing. But it's an easy way, right? And the other problem is it's socially acceptable, in, in the sense exactly. Like even I mean, <coughs> I'm not saying in the sense that you know you can go and smoke and blow the f smoke mm -hmm. at somebody's mm -hmm. face. But if you drink too much, and you go in front of somebody, you could get embarrassed. Mm -hmm. If you light five cigarettes talking to a person, nobody... Yeah. Yesterday morning I was in a uh, bus station. This guy was smoking. It was so disgusting. You know, just beautiful early morning, glory, you know. And this guy is smoking cigarettes and puffing the smoke in the air, which gets into your face or even the smell of it, even if it doesn't. But that's what I thought about. It's like, how could somebody, how could the society allow such an ugly thing to just happen like that? But then I realized it's socially acceptable. And for him, he's not even ashamed of doing it because it's normal, but it's a disgusting thing, you know? An approach towards stopping smoking, which is based on understanding, not based on coercion or uh, fighting it or uh, conflict and duality and wanting to be this way but being that way. So I want to share this with you. Uh, there are two types of dependence. There is the physical dependence and the psychological dependence mm -hmm. on cigarettes. The physical dependence has to do with the nicotine in your central nervous system being 
uh, addicted to nicotine and uh, this is fairly easy to beat if you don't smoke for three days maybe you're a bit grouchy and then but you get over it and uh, it's, it's fairly easy so the physical dependence is not that difficult to stop what I believe is, is the diff more difficult part for people is the psychological dependence and I'll go through this quite fast and then we can go back and review it what I mean by the psychological dependence is that uh, first of all using time as an excuse meaning right now I'm addicted, leave me alone, I will bring some sort of a, uh, objective like I will grab when I graduate, when I am whatever, for women when I'm pregnant or whatever it is. At some point, for you it was September 11 uh, <clears throat> when these horrible things happened um, and then you wanted to stop then but of course I caught you smoking a week later. But it's like that. So what happens, the mind tricks itself. It says, leave me alone, let me be with my addiction I will do it later. But this later is an Never illusion. Yeah. This is just a deferment. It's a, it's a, so psychological time is an illusion. And what that means is that now, whatever you are now, you will be the same in the future unless you change in some sort of a now. Which means the, ch the root of change is in the now and not sometime in the future. So that's one thing. The other thing is that uh, cigarette acts as a, as a bad friend, which acts like a good friend. So a good friend doesn't hurt you, but this little thing is a bad friend. But when you're happy, it says, let's celebrate together. When you're sad, it says, I will soothe your pain. So it just enters into every little corner of life, into every emotion that you have. It tries to, not that it, it doesn't have a mind of its own. This is what's happening. Yeah, actually. you're playing. Yeah, this is you. what's happening. Yeah, so you depend on it for, um, uh, for happiness, as a friend when you're sad and so on. So the key to this is understanding. Understanding this dependence can make it go away, can make you become free from this dependence. And this is actually true not just with cigarettes and smoking, but many other things in life. This is how life works. Even in physics, they've discovered this in quantum physics, that when you, when you really observe a particle of matter, it changes its behavior just from the, from the observation. So, so seeing is magical, it's a key to see, but then there's an the art of seeing. How do you see? If you see and you judge what you see, mm -hmm. you're not really seeing. You're condemning it, you're, 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 not, you're moving away from it. You're moving into what should be instead of what is. You know, if you, if you see something and you say, oh, I shouldn't be this way, or this is bad, you're already moving away from it. You're not there looking at it. So the key to ha is to have a quiet mind, to see it, and just to, uh, yeah, understanding, let it unfold, let it tell its story. Um, and see how you depend on it, how if you're feeling a little bit disturbed psychologically, if your boss says something nasty or your wife says something or whatever, the cigarette soothes, gives you some pleasure, you, you know, how you depend. And when you see how you depend, that by itself makes you change. So, with physical dependence, it's easier to stop smoking if you understand how nicotine works against other drugs. So there's stimulants, there's uh, depressants and hallucinogenics. One of the nasty things, I had this idea myself, but I read that some doctors were saying the same thing, is that one of the reasons cigarette is so nasty is that against stimulants, it works as a depressant. And against depressants, it works as a stimulant. So when you drink coffee, you boost yourself up, you stimulate yourself. Then you have a pleasure from smoking because it calms you down, it gives you peace. Because that's what we're after, we're after peace. We want to have comfort. And when you drink beer, for example, that uh, depresses your central nervous system, alcohol, and then you, s you have a pleasure from smoking because it gives you a boost. So to see this, again, is the important thing, just to see how it works. And it makes it easier if you're quitting, if you also cut down on your coffee, you know. And, uh, yeah, alcohol. And in general, it's good to improve the state of your health. So to do some exercise, which you do already, maybe even take some vitamins, which is, which is good to eat healthy, to eat, I don't eat meat, um, to eat some raw food so you get enough enzymes and vitamins and so on, and just to improve the general state of health. This makes the body not want to be dependent on this little thing for happiness. And this is a vicious circle, really, this cigarette, because you smoke it and you feel awful. And then you feel awful and you want to smoke it to give you happiness. It's really a vicious, a nasty vicious circle. 
and it's nasty because yeah, it's so so hard to beat it. Uh, you know, a friend of mine, Jack, whom you know, he said that he tried to quit smoking for twenty years. He said that he smoked for thirty years, twenty years of which he was trying to quit. Every Monday morning he would wake up and say, "I'm going to quit." And he did that for 20 years, and finally he quit. But, yeah, no, he's been but that's quit for 10 years. But that's a long time. 20 years of every Monday morning waking up and essentially getting into a fight with yourself in a few hours or a few days because you want to quit, but the fact of it is that you're, you're addicted to it, so you want to do it. And then, so it's a conflict. This is not a way of life which is peaceful, you know? Conflict is, for me, is deadly, any kind of conflict, to live in the, this state. So time by itself will not fix it either. So it's something that a person has to really do and do it now. And the older you get, the more difficult it gets. I had some friends who, you know, out of every two smokers, one dies from smoking. And unfortunately, it's not a quick and easy death. It's a slow and painful death. At least the ones that I've seen. I've seen several people die from this. Friends, father's friends, even celebrities like George Harrison and others who died from smoking. And I had a friend that they first cut his tongue and then they cut his, I don't know, he got some sort of a throat cancer. And it was just absolutely miserable. Another friend of mine, good friend in San Diego, his father died. They told him in the hospital that he, you were, he was in death bed and he still couldn't s stop smoking. This is how nasty it gets. Mm -hmm. And the older you get, the more nasty it is. So you should just free yourself from this. And um, yeah, the sooner the better. The key conflict is to, again to understand that when you fight something you give it strength it becomes so fighting is not the way if you try to fight smoking it just gets stronger why because you get weaker because you lose energy in that fight so this is always the case when there's a discrepancy or a um, friction between what is and what should be so if I am fat sitting in front of the TV eating an ice cream and I think I should go jogging it will never happen because I have a conflict between what I am and what I think I should be and I lose energy I will end up on that couch for hours watching the TV eating ice cream because I don't have the energy to get off my butt and go running mm -hmm. so the other way is to not think about jogging not to condemn yourself but just to see what you are you see what you are with a quiet mind and that seeing is action. And then you just, you just get up and like it, Nike says, just do it. You don't think about it. You don't just struggle with it. You just go and do it. So, yeah, this is all the beauty of understanding what you are. When you understand what you are, then that changes naturally instead of via friction and pressure and effort, which is no good. So that's part of the message. I think there are a couple of uh, challenges, right? One is, like uh, I was saying earlier, smoking is not as much as a taboo as a lot of other things are, mm -hmm. right? So I get up in the morning, I go turn the kettle on for the uh, hot water, go, go to the bathroom, and then I go smoke. But the, the it helps with the toilet coffee, too. Or, no. That's not the case in my life. <laughs> Either, you know, with a coffee or a tea, you go and smoke, right? Now, if I were to do the same exact thing with anything else, drinking, uh, heroin, heroin, marijuana, it doesn't matter, right? People would go nuts. Mm -hmm. But with smoking, it's okay, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's as bad as everything else, but mm -hmm. it's okay. And the same during the day, right? I think in the other case of others, there are some self-imposed blocks, mm -hmm. right? Because of society and mm -hmm. things like that. Whereas in this case, there is really no, mm -hmm. no block, right? You could literally be in a meeting and you can say, you know, I want a quick five minute break to go smoke and everybody will laugh. You go smoke, come back. You couldn't do the same thing to say, I'm going to go have a beer and come back, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of right. compounds the problem, you know? Yeah. You don't get the social support. Not only that, you actually get encouraged to do it. You go in the train station, you see these big billboard ads. Young people are bombarded with advertisements. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And so you're actually encouraged to do it. Some people argue that the government actually likes it because then they collect a tax, basically, which funds retirement. But the fact is that they, it actually costs them a lot in terms of health care. Yeah, yeah. And this is, this is the sad part in that the government cares if you're wearing a seatbelt or not. You can get penalized for not wearing a seatbelt. So it's saying that I care about your, your, your well-being. Living, but I don't your, care how well you live. Exactly. But if you're smoking and you're going and you're miserable, you're psychologically absolutely miserable, which most smokers are. Some of them do like it, but I think it's mostly young people whose bodies are strong. And then some old people, they just, I don't know, they become insensitive or they just believe that they like it. I don't, I don't understand how this could be. But most of the people that I talk to finally admit that they don't like it. At least they don't like most of the cigarettes they smoke. They might like half of a cigarette out of the 20 that they smoke. No, like in my case, I don't like any of them. There right? you go. I hate getting into a room where people have been smoking. Mm -hmm. I can't enter a car where people have been smoking. I don't smoke inside the house. I have to have the open space mm -hmm. because otherwise I can't tolerate the smell. I can't tolerate the smell of a uh, ashtray, but I still keep smoking, right? Yeah. And, and you know, that's one thing I wish I had never ever done in my life. Like, yeah. Of all the things I can think of, that's one thing if I could go back, Yeah. I would never... And that's what I try to tell my kids too, it's like... Yeah, but by know, doing it, you're actually setting an example. Yeah. Because kids of parents who are smokers have a higher chance of being smokers than, than non-smokers. But see, my parents never smoked. Yeah. Right? It was just, just the, the peer pressure mm -hmm. and the... Uh, so if you look at the facts, here's a person, intelligent, educated person. He's doing something which he does not like at all. He's not... He, how many smoke? How many do you smoke? 10 a day? 20 a day? 15. 15 a day. That's, that's almost a pack. I don't know how much they cost this in a day. Seven, seven francs a, a pack. That's more than $7 a pack. Uh, so he's spending seven, eight dollars a pack a day do on something which he doesn't like, something which is making him uh, unhealthy, something which is making him unhappy, and something which influences his kids in the bad. So it's all negative. Yeah, know? there's nothing positive. There's thing. nothing, nothing positive, positive about this. And why can't we change? And you know all the stuff. You know all the bad things about. It. You know it makes sh your clothes sting. You know it's unhealthy for your gums, you know, you know all the whole thing, and for your heart and all. So knowledge doesn't change. That's the problem, yeah. Yeah, so knowledge is not enough. And that's why what I found out which works is, is insight, understanding, seeing, observation. It's really magical. So you can try this, which means you go throughout your day, do it with awareness. Even when you pick up a cigarette, don't just do it without being aware. Look at everything but this is true with non-smokers too i think as humans we should do this as humans we should be aware of what we are if a thought comes and goes we should be aware of it not just be a slave to it every person on this earth have some kind of dependency on something right the key is the dependency has to be on something positive right why do why should we de why should we have any dependence? Like, I mean, look, you know, we, we are some dependent people are on dependent on eating. Some people are dependent. No, we all on, are. Uh, no, sorry. There is a difference between eating because you have to survive mm -hmm. and eating for the sake of eating. For pleasure. For pleasure, right? So everybody has that. Now the key is not to get the pleasure from one thing, and definitely not the pleasure from something that you can do without any control, right? Sorry, you should Even that, while you're eating mm -hmm. for pleasure, there is still some restrictions on when you can eat. Mm -hmm. Smoking is one thing where, where there is absolutely no restriction, and that's right. the fundamental problem. Okay, that's interesting. But, you know, I've heard this line quite often. When, when, when finally a person says, in fact, I, sometimes it's a surprise to themselves. I just ask them, do you like smoking? And obviously the first answer is yes. Do you really? Do you like all the cigarettes? Every puff of her? And then they get to see, oh, I really don't like smoking. So that's the first step. And then they try to justify it. No, no, I'm not and, sorry. I'm not trying no, to No, no, but I know, I know. But one of the justifications that I've heard, which is quite often, is that uh, everybody has some sort of a vice, this is mine. Okay? 
But about dependence, of course, we, no, we're my, all dependent. I think I'm saying it in a different sense. Yeah, I'm not you saying that's what you're saying. You just reminded me of that. But but you have a vice which is positive. I have a vice that is negative. Mm -hmm. If I every time I need a break, if I were to climb the stairs, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. People exactly. might think I'm weird, exactly. but there's fundamentally nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that. Or I go to the park and sit there for 10 minutes and come back. Right. Which is a vice, fine. But smoking as a vice is a problem. Yeah. So but the other ones, I don't call it a vice. If you, have to, if you take a break and go to the park, I don't call this a vice. But let's, let's not get into yeah, terminology. The, yeah. It's just you need that break from your... Yeah. And, and you know, there are hundreds of ways that mm -hmm. you could get that break. And, and I think... Okay, I'm just telling from my point of view. Mm -hmm. Smoking is a break, right? It's, it's like, like you said, you know, I'm happy, oh, let me go quickly smoke. Oh, I'm a little tense, let me quickly go smoke. Oh, I have to go to a meeting, I'm in a hurry. Let me quickly smoke and then make the... Right, right. So it's like that, uh, what do you call it? The, the Instant. Added, the placeholders. Right. right. It's, it's become the, the placeholder throughout mm -hmm. the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then you go to sleep, you sleep for like eight hours, nine hours, you don't think of smoking. Yeah, or you fly, take a long flight. Fly, yeah, that's that's so life can classic be, example. Yeah, you you know because if I fly to New York, you're talking about twelve hours in total. Mm -hmm. You know, once you enter the airport, you right? Smoke, no problem. You're sitting there comfortable. You're not like mm -hmm. yelling at people, screaming. You get off the plane. Mm -hmm. You find the first place where you can smoke, and mm -hmm. you're like at it. So. Also, yeah, about this thing, some girl was telling me recently that it, for her, it's a way of taking, it's an excuse to take breaks in the office. But no, yeah. it's more socially acceptable to take a cigarette break than just to go outside and take deep breaths. Isn't that a yeah, bit yeah, that's true. stupid? We all know most of the damages. One of, one of the things that's not often thought about is that smoking brings bad luck. Maybe it's not even good to talk about this, but uh, because you may be inviting this kind of energy. But there, in the, I read something from an Ay Ayurveda kind of a thought, and what it said was that there are negative psychic influences in the universe, and when you smoke, you become susceptible to these negative psychic influences. Mm -hmm. Which kind of makes sense because every, every puff that you take has like, I don't know, I read anywhere from 400 to 4,000 4, 4, carcinogens. So you're, you're, putting, so you're poisoning your blood. So it makes sense that you would be attracting negative energy in a way. And I had so many weird experiences with this thing, with, uh, with, with bad luck associated with smoking and smokers. Um, so no, in a way, I like, think it know, like the whole bronchitis and pneumonia, yeah, all those things. You know, it just doesn't uh, help, right? Because every time you're smoking, your immunity goes down, mm -hmm. and you're more susceptible to. Um, see, that's the problem, though. Like, like you were saying, right? When you're young, you don't realize, and then by the time you realize, it's too late. Exactly. Because, like, if. If I had known what I know now when I was 21, mm -hmm. I'm sure I wouldn't even have. And I would have there been quick to listen to him. To, yeah. to, to quit, right? But during that time, I would play racquetball, I would play you know, mm -hmm. all kinds of sports. Didn't really, mm -hmm. you know, so it was like, oh, you know, it doesn't really bother <laughs> me. But now when I go play squash for an hour, by the end of it, mm -hmm. I'm like exhausted mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm like really breathing hard to get. To get mm. the right amount of oxygen. Yeah, an eighteen-year-old. It yeah. doesn't matter. To smoke twenty you cigarettes. Be smoking and playing squash. Yeah, really they don't feel it at all because yeah. their body is so strong. And for women, it's really, really bad in terms of yeah the genetic stuff. And if they want to have kids, that I have to work on is like figure out how to quit smoking. So I would suggest to you um, two-pronged approach. One on the physical side. And one on the psychological side. On the physical side, how much how much coffee do you drink, if, if at all? Three cups a day. Three cups. That's already too much, because coffee stimulates you. It makes it harder to stop smoking. If you want to stop smoking, I suggest to cut down on coffee. Add, add hot water to it. Gradually put it aside, 
and uh, I would just not drink it at all. Yeah, drink tea or just go on herbal teas, not even tea, because also black tea has a stimulant. I would just stay away from any stimulants. This will make you, this will make you calmer, and then you don't you don't need a cigarette to calm you down. Already three. If I drink one cup of coffee, I'm just crawling the walls. You know, I just look at it like this and. But yeah, people get used to it. I know people drink 10 cups a day. So, so that would be one, one thing. What about alcohol? On the weekends. Just not, not regularly, okay. So I would also cut that down and then cut down the coffee. And then diet, you eat healthy? Very healthy. Very healthy, perfect. Are you vegetarian? Or? Most of the time, but I okay. do eat fish once in a while. Okay. And chicken. But you watch that you get enough protein and different yeah. vitamins and you eat salads and fruits and... So that's great. You have that covered already. I exercise. You the only exercise thing that is that's negative great. with me is smoking. What about cycle? So the physical aspect looks like you will not have much of a difficult time. I would. I think the key that I see is the coffee. Cut cut that down. The rest will be easy. I think. What about uh, psychologically? What is that? That's a very loaded question. It is. <laughs> I guess I would. I don't know how to ask this. How is the psychological state in terms of? anxieties and I mean you're not you don't I'm seem really to be a guy. you're a calm guy okay no no no, no fundamental issues right. I mean I'm a human yeah but being a human has its own <laughs> package right? I'm not a machine but right yeah but no no extreme swings of yeah. mood or yeah. emotions or, or special things. difficult times you're going through because of whatever you know because these things can make it a bit more difficult yeah but but then you know you have I'm sure you have your moments, but you don't mm. smoke because of that, right? Right, right. So, no, I'm, you know, this is, I think it's starting to sound like this whole thing is staged, right? But, no, I, I really need to quit and I have to figure out how to do it. But there is no how. That's the thing. I think, at least my, because if there was a how, 95% of people who want to smoke, they don't do it. If they, there was a how, they could just follow. Because how means what? How means a method. No, yes, it's a one, two, word for three, me. four. I know, yeah. but I'm being a bit technical now. Yeah, yeah. Because it's an important thing. Because many people in, in the whole field of psychology, they look for hows. There are so many books out there, these self-help books that, that try to sell you hows. But really, in this field, how is very immature. Because how means method. One, two, three, four, you reach some state. But that state itself is moving. But let's not get into that. Um, you want to find something that, you're, that works for you. That's what you mean. So what I'm proposing is that just okay, take a holis stop, holistic... Smoke, smoke, drink, I mean, stop drinking coffee. I would just say stop drinking coffee. This will help. Or at least cut down. I would stop. And plus it will give me some confidence that I can quit something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I think that by itself will bring a big change. Mm -hmm. Because coffee stimulates, you want to calm yourself down. Okay. And uh, the, but I, I like I would your start, idea of that, that. Let me try and, that. And psychologically, just be aware. When you're smoking, yeah. just be aware. Try not to do it in... That's what the cigarette company wants you to do. They want you to do it in your sleep. In other words, not be really aware and awake. They want you think, to think about the... I don't know, the... The, mar the, mar the Marlboro Man on the horse in the West Wild West. Or some beach died? in Australia from smoking. He, he died from throat cancer and he actually became an advocate for non-smoking. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? I, th I think I knew that, yes. So, to, to not do that, don't, don't make images. The thing you're smoking now, don't smoke and think about Australia's beaches. Look at what you're doing now. How is it actually tasting? How, what is your mental state, especially? And how is your body state? And uh, just try to look. Try to understand. And the other thing is approach your daily life, you know, bring order to your daily life, which probably you have already, I don't know. But that also helps, because that helps your mind to be calm. You know, if you have a messy room, if you have a messy whatever, the mind wants to go there, you become more restless. Um, no, but I think that's a very fair point, right? Like, um, to, to really look at what you're doing, that kind of makes sense, because... You know, like I can think of already like so many scenarios, right? Like you're in the middle of a conversation, you have guests over, you're sitting and having a nice conversation mm -hmm. and it's going very nice and all of a sudden you have this urge to go smoke. You get out, 
You go outside, you smoke, you so what do you back. do? What do you do in that situation? You, I just get up and go. No, I know, but the whole thing is about that urge. And the challenge is, we live without those urges. Yeah, that's uh, fair enough. And that's this fair. urge is very powerful, isn't it? Like, like I'll be playing a game with my family or with my kids. Right? I don't know, bingo, or it doesn't matter, Pictionary. Mm -hmm. And when that urge comes, boom, you know. I know. The whole thing is put on hold. I know all about it. You go, but that the problem is, like you said, you know, you're doing it all without even thinking. Right? Yeah, without even looking. And but people are not even questioning. Yeah. Oh, he has to go smoke off okay, And what happens is you. that you give into it, you go do it, you follow the urge, and then it comes again and you do it again, yeah. and not, never really look at that urge itself. What is the root of that urge itself? Uh, a lot of times our body wants something, and we interpret, misinterpret it because of the way we've abused it. You see, the body itself is very intelligent, but when we misuse it, it we, we dampen its intelligence. It becomes dull, you know? So then it gives us signals that what it wants, and then we misinterpret it. Nic the urge for the nicotine, the addiction is there, but this goes away quickly after three, four days yeah. on the physical side. And the coffee itself brings an urge too. The coffee stimulates, so you, you lose the balance, you lose that point of calmness and peace when you drink coffee, you get, you get a kick. Of course, these are all bigger questions. Why do we need stimulants at all? I think some people probably need it medically. They have some medical deficiencies. They may, they may need some stimulants. But I think most people who take stimulants don't really need it, you know? But, um, so in general, I think our whole culture is very, very based on dependence on different things, on stimulants, and like they have advertisements. Yeah, see, see I think, uh, <clears throat> Like, you know, year, years back, they, they got all that by spending time exploring and, you know, understanding themselves and things like that. Whereas now it's all like, what is the quick fix and what is the quickest thing that I can get? So That's it's right. like a beer or it's a mm -hmm. cigarette or it's marijuana or cocaine mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Like, how do I get there really quick? Mm -hmm. It should take years to get, but anyway get there, which is something they already the, have, actually. Yeah, but that's but a problem. Lost, they lost the equilibrium, so they're it's trying like to get back to it. Permanence, there's no permanence, mm -hmm. but, but yeah. Okay, sounds good. Like the story of, I think it's a Rumi story, where the guy goes to India everywhere trying to find wisdom, and then he couldn't find it, and he comes and digs in, the, in his own wall, uh, ground, and he finds it in his own house. <laughs> you know it's, this story? Yeah, yeah. There is another one which is actually very good, is this guy, he keeps going to this uh, knowledge, no, 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 somebody who's a wise man, wise man. Mm -hmm. and he keeps saying, you know, you need to help me overcome my grief. Mm -hmm. So then the wise man says that, but what is the reason for your grief? And he says, I can't tell you that, but you need to help me be happy. So the wise man says, if you can't tell me what the reason is, I can make you happy feel be happy. Mm -hmm. So he goes away, then he comes back and then this goes on for a while and then finally he says, okay, I will tell you what the reason is, but then will you help me be happy? So the wise man says, sure. So he says, my son did something and I was not happy, so I stopped talking to him and ever since I'm very unhappy. So the wise man says, so you're, if you want to be happy, your solution is very simple, just go talk to your son, apologize and you'll be happy. So the guy goes, does it, and then, you know, he's happy. So mm -hmm. a lot of times the answer is within yourself. Yeah, you yeah. just don't know. You know? That's right. You don't, know the, you don't open the question enough. Yeah. So it's good to question things and, then, and not let the fire die because that would be devastating. If oh, you no, just let the fire die. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what you said is easier said than done. Okay, my reaction to that is this. It's... I learned in my life that if I call something difficult, it becomes difficult. On the other hand, if you say it's easy, that might be immature because you haven't really tried. So the main thing is to try yeah. and find out. Yeah. You find out yourself. I can't get in. I can't be in a worse situation than I'm in right now. <laughs> right? It, just to see what you are is, is really magical because, yeah, there's a whole momentum that wants, wants to say that you're okay, it's acceptable, like you said. But the fact is, it makes you suffer. The fact is, you suffer. And I believe that we can really end our suffering if we really pay attention to it, understand it. At least that's the first step. And I really believe that 
it's been proven to me that when you understand something, then some change comes about naturally, effortlessly. You don't know. It's the unknown. It's like almost a golden rule. It's a magical thing. It's a sacred thing. It's a mysterious thing. It's a mystery. How is it that when you understand something, it changes? <laughs> so, good luck. <laughs>